بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ صلی اللہ محمد محمد ویلکم ویورس ٹو ندر نیو ایپیسوڈ آف آنٹرپرینور شپ سیریز ہوپ یو آل آر ڈوئنگ گڈ اینڈ ہیونگ سیف ٹائم آؤٹ دیئر ان پریویس ویڈیو وی ڈسکس دا فور ٹائپس آف آنٹرپرینور شپ اینڈ دیئر کیریکٹرسٹکس ان ٹوڈیز ایپیسوڈ نمبر فور آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو شیئر دا نالج اباؤٹ آنٹرپرینورین اسٹریٹجی ایز فار ایوری نیو بزنس اینڈ وینچر اسٹریٹجی پلیز اے وائٹل رول ٹو اسٹارٹ اٹ اینڈ کیپ اٹ آن دا رائٹ ٹریک Generating and exploiting new entries will be discussed in this video. So let's get started. These are some main points to be explored. We shall explore another success story of an entrepreneur. In this video, entrepreneurial profile of Justin Ferrer will be shared for learning purpose. Then we shall see what is entrepreneurial strategy. New entry opportunities will be discussed. We shall see the resources required to generate new entry opportunity. advantages of first movers strategies to reduce risks and at the end we shall find out the challenges for entrepreneurs all right viewers let's start the session by opening up the profile of justin perr justin perr was a australian entrepreneur his history indicates series of steps and missteps that have emerged into a strategy of personal and business success Justin's first entrepreneurial venture failed. The story is not pretty. He started up a mobile pizza business when he was 18 years old. The idea for the van was actually someone else. I was working in a pizza shop as a delivery driver, trying to decide what I wanted to do in my life, said Justin. I had recently been thrown out of university for gross failing and was at a loose end. Eventually Justin's business failed because among other things the local council terminated permits for these types of mobile food business when asked about failed businesses Justin's first comment was that it was the best learning experience of his life his second comment was that it was a great motivator it provided motivation when you know things are not going well Justin went on saying I knew I enjoyed business and I was frustrated that I couldn't make it work but I felt more like a failure than a success waiting to happen my confidence was hurt and I was looking for a lot more security I had few options and no clear visions so when the opportunity came along to go back to university I grabbed it with both hands with a pizza van failure I knew I could work like a dog and get nowhere University gave him options he had become an exceptional student with a passion to learn and passion to apply the knowledge he majored in accounting and his first job out of university was with Ernst and Young an accounting consulting firm accounting education and experience provided valuable knowledge about the inner workings of a business with the auditing department and the number reflecting the entrepreneurial decision making processes in the business services and tax department Justin's also chose accounting as the foundation from which to relaunch his entrepreneurial career because it gave him legitimacy with other in the business community helped him build a large network with influential people one of the Justin's accounting client was a slip pay a ship building and repair business from this work he was able to gain considerable industry specific knowledge and industry specific network he bought the business and is growing it while simultaneously improving its efficiency the success of the business has even exceeded his own dreams for it at the time of purchase he has recently gone into the partnership with his brother Warwick and purchased another business a metal working business this business has considerable potential in its own right but has the added benefits of synergies with the slip pay this business is also on the path to success when i think of an ideal entrepreneur i think of justin justin is an optimistic and charismatic entrepreneur who attacks his tasks and life with confidence and passion he has control over the money side of his business but also has the flexibility to allow his strategies to emerge it is really an impressive profile so here we define what the entrepreneurial strategy is entrepreneurial strategy could be defined as the strategy that represents the set of decisions actions and reactions that first generate and then exploit over a time a new entry in a way that maximizes the benefits of newness and minimizes its cost 
One of the essential act of entrepreneurship is new entry. Entry based on a new product, for example, laser technology, tang, freeze-dried coffee, velcro, and teflon, etc. A new market, for example, mountain bikes for stony hiking tracks, and a new organization, for example, Uber Taxi. As we have come to know that entrepreneurial strategy for new entry maximizes the benefits of newness and minimizes its cost. The creation of resource bundle is the basis for new entry opportunities. A resource bundle is created from the entrepreneurial market te knowledge, technological knowledge, and other resources. The new entry has the potential of being a source of sustained superior firm performance if the resource bundle underlying the new entry is valuable, rare, and difficult to imitate. Therefore, those wishing to generate an innovation needs to look to the unique experiences and knowledge within themselves and their teams. What kind of information on a new entry is required? Having created new resource combination, the entrepreneur needs to determine whether it is in fact valuable, rare, and imitable by assessing whether this new product or new market is sufficiently attractive to be worth exploiting and then acting on that decision. The decision to exploit or not to exploit the new entry opportunity depends on whether the entrepreneur has worth she or he believes to be sufficient information to make a decision and on whether the window is still open for this new entry opportunity. The entrepreneur's determination of sufficient information depends on the stock of information and the entrepreneur's level of comfort in making such a decision without perfect information. Being first to the market, successful new entry requires that the entrepreneur firm have an advantage over competitors. Entrepreneurs often claim that the competitive advantage arises from being first to the market. Being first can result in a number of advantages that can enhance performance such as cost advantages, reduce competition, securing important source of supply and distribution, obtaining, obtaining prime position in the market, gaining acceptance through early participation. But first movers do not always prosper. For example, in the market for video recorders for the first movers were Apex and Sony, yet they were replaced or surpassed by JVC and Mersoshita. Similarly, in the ballpoint pen market, the first movers were Reynolds and Evershock. They disappeared, whereas later entrants Parker and Bake have been highly successful. Weavers, there are some conditions that can push a first mover towards performance disadvantages, such as high instability of the environment surrounding the entry, and a lack of ability among the management teams to educate customers, and a lack of ability among the management team to erect barriers to entry and imitation to ex extend the firm's lead time. For example, if the entrepreneur offers a new product that has attributes that the market does add value, then there is a poor fit between a firm's current product offerings and the external environment and performance will be poor. The key success factors of an industry is superior service, reliability, or the lowest price or having one's technology adopted as the industry standard. We can take some examples to illustrate these facts. For example, as Dell was able to create a business model that enabled it to sell personal computers at lower price, those that were led to adopt to changes in customer demand and continued to rely primarily on their reputation for quality were surpassed by Dell. Another significant example is Toyota Company. Toyota delayed entry into the small car markets of the U.S and was able to reduce demand uncertainty by serving customers of market leaders Volkswagen and using this information to produce a product that better satisfies customers. Dakotel provided almost all the automatic teller machines in 1974. However, when technology becomes available that allowed customers to electronically transfer funds, Companies such as Honeywell, IBM, and Borox were in a position to adopt the new technology and better satisfy customers' demand. As a result, Dakotel's market share dropped to 10% in just four years. Medtronic was the market leader in hard pacemakers, but lost its position after it was slow to change from its existing technology to a new lithium-based technology. 
a new entrance unconstrained by organizational inertia was able to exploit and penalize Medtronics for its tardiness. A new entry involves considerable risk for entrepreneur and his or her firm. This risk of downside loss is partially derived from the entrepreneur's uncertainties over market demand, technological development, and the actions of competitors. For example, a customer may know that a new software package provides more powerful spreadsheets functions and at a lower price, but will remain reluctant to purchase the new product until he or she knows how long it will take to learn how to use the new software. This could include an extensive tutorial as a part of the software package as well as free helpline. Strategies can be used to reduce some or all of these uncertainties and reduce risk of downside loss. Next, we are going to find out these two market strategies to deal with uncertainties and risks. Reverse two such strategies are market scope and imitation. Scope is a choice by the entrepreneur about which customer groups to serve and how to serve them. For example, the choice between a narrow and broad scope. Imitation involves copying the practices of other firms, whether those other firms are in the industry being entered or in related industries. For example, an entrepreneur might enter the fast food industry by franchising a McDonald's store in a new geographic location. The entrepreneur is imitating the business practices of other McDonald's stores. In fact, imitation is mandatory and benefits from an established market demand and intellectual property, protected name and products, and access to knowledge of financial, marketing, and managerial issues. Me Too strategy is copying product that already exist and attempting to build an advantage through minor variations. Me Too and franchising are both imitation strategies. For example, ice cream shops are an example of Me Too imitation strategy, where new entrants have imitated successful stores but have some been able to differentiate themselves from others already in the industry by offering some form of variations. We have seen competing ice cream shops imitate each other by offering similar shop layouts and locations, for example, inside the malls. Some same choices of flavors and cones and similar promotion strategies, such as taste before you buy. Creation of new organization. So far from previous episodes, we have determined that an entrepreneurship also can involve the creation of a new organization. The creation of a new organization offers some challenges for entrepreneurs that are not faced by those who manage established firms. These challenges refer to as liabilities of newness, reflect a new organization's higher cost of learning new tasks, increased conflicts, over newly created roles and responsibilities and lack of well-developed informal communication networks. However, new organizations also may have some assets of newness, the most important of which is an increased ability to learn new knowledge, which can provide an important strategic advantage over mature competitors, particularly in dynamic changing environments. Entrepreneur needs to capitalize on these assets by newness by creating a learning organization that is flexible and able to accommodate this new knowledge and this future actions. This shifts the emphasis in understanding firm performance from a heavily relies on strategic plans to greater emphasis on the strategic learning and flexibility of the entrepreneur and his or her management team. Well, viewers, there are so many Islamic real-life inspirational stories around us. One of the popular stories is being dramatized in the form of Turkish drama serial Ertuğrul Ghazi. Now, we all are familiar to this glorious historical hero. For today's episode, I have selected a quote from Ertuğrul Ghazi. As for our food for thought, who said, People with big responsibilities also face the biggest challenges. These words are also true and valid for entrepreneurs who faced many risks and challenges for starting and establishing new ventures. Great people face great hurdles. Life is a series of challenges. Challenges polish our professional, mental, and spiritual strengths. Well, viewers, thank you for watching this video.
Hopefully, I have shared a meaningful knowledge about entrepreneurial strategy that would be clear and helpful to you in some way. In next episode, inshallah, we shall learn about a new topic that would be ideas for new venture and explore another new entrepreneurial profile. And for that, you can like, share and subscribe my videos and channel Spread the Light. You can follow me on these Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn and Twitter accounts. Thank you so much. Stay safe and blessed.